every one of you this morning. Um, I uh, encourage you this morning, no matter what is on your hearts, in your minds, what might be stressing you out this morning, maybe it's a book report coming up, maybe it's a test, maybe it's something going on in your life, maybe it's something this week at work that is coming that is the unknown, maybe there's a challenge you're facing somewhere in your life. I uh, encourage you, I implore you, I pray for you to let that go during this hour of worship. How can you be stressed if we're going to cover the entire book of Revelation <laughs> during this hour? And also, when Pastor Seth's message is called Conquering Dragons, how can you be stressed? Wow. <laughs> so, um, I encourage you to let go of whatever you have brought here with you that might be stressing you out, that your mind not, might not be here and present and active in this place right now. Let's get our hearts and minds ready for worship. <coughs>
minds to perceive your wisdom and open our eyes to recognize your healing love and your powerful presence. Amen.
morning. Um, and we talked about what book we we're going to do for our next book club. Um, and the group decided on the book Everybody Always by Bob Goff. Um, if you haven't read Bob Goff, he is a very hilarious, um, kind of lighthearted guy who has also done a lot of good and is always trying to love his neighbor. So I highly recommend the book. Um, and if you can join us on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, we will be discussing that. And that will start in two weeks. So you've got two weeks to get the book um, and start reading if you want to join us for that. I'll also remind you that this week is our prayer group meeting on Tuesday at 10 a.m. So if you'd like to come and join us for that, we welcome you to that. Um, do you have any joys or concerns that you would like to share this morning? A joy is being here in Glendale and celebrating as an English church who is open to everybody. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, safe travels for Chris. He's coming home from India this week. We've been praying for my son John, who started college this week. Yay. <laughs> Salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God 
and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down. Who accuses them day and night before our God? But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. So when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had, been, who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle, so that she could fly from the serpent into the wilderness, and to a place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time. Then from his mouth the serpent poured water like a river after the woman, to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to the help of the woman, it opens its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her children, those who keep the commandments of God and hold the testimony of Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. So I think perhaps Stephen was a little overly generous um, with his statement that we are going to cover the entire book of Revelation, although that is what I said we were doing it this morning. Um, as you can tell from that passage that we read, it's pretty clear what Revelation is about, right? <clears throat> right? Dragons and all these weird things happening. Well, I chose that passage um, because I needed to choose something, and I thought it would be fun to choose a passage with dragons. Um, but the reality is that all of the book of Revelation has very weird stuff happening in it. Um, and if you've never read it, it can be quite confusing. And if you have read it, it is also very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was in seminary, um, one of our assignments, I, I studied youth ministry, and so one of our assignments that our New Testament professor had us do was write a paper on how we would teach Revelation to teenagers. Um, and I don't remember much about the paper except explaining that I really don't understand Revelation, and nobody does, and I got an A on the paper, so <laughs> apparently that is the correct answer. Um, but this, of course, is an appropriate conclusion to our series on weird stories of the Bible, finishing with the end of our Bible and this very weird book of Revelation. So the Greek word for Revelation is apocalypsis, um, and that's kind of the way that the so-called author John starts the book of Revelation um, with this word. And the word apocalypsis means hidden, or that which is unveiled. And to me, this is a sign that if you're reading this book, that the, the meaning is very hidden. And so if you've read this book and come away with a clear understanding of what it means, you're probably missing what's actually happening. Often, this book has been used to suggest that the world is about to end. And people have been doing this for years and years. Um, I remember I was in high school when the year 2000 was about to roll around, mm -hmm. and everybody thought that it was going to be the end of the world because apparently computer programmers hadn't planned for to go into the next millennium. Um, and then, of course, the new year happened, and what happened? Nothing. No computers went down. The world did not end. Um, and so anyone who has used the book of Revelation to argue for the end of the world um, apparently has already done so very falsely. Um, so if someone tries to convince you once again that the world is about to end, um, they must know a lot more than we do. The book itself was actually not meant to predict the end of the world today. Um, when it was written, it was a message to the people during that time, 2,000 years ago. There's a part um, towards the end of Revelation where it talks about sealing up the scroll, and it says, it actually tells the, the vision that John has, he's told that he's not to seal up the scroll because the time is very near. And so from that we can gather that, he's, that the message of Revelation is specifically for the church during that time, and not necessarily specifically for us 2,000 years later. Um, there's a kind of a parallel scripture in Daniel, the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, where they 
talk about the scroll. And in that one, they tell him to seal it up because that, that vision, that message is not for that time, but it's going to be for later. But in the book of Revelation, and they're told to keep it open because this time is ending, or time is upon us right now. And so this message that is being shared is for the people right now when this was written nearly 2,000 years ago. So what is the point of the book of Revelation? Well, it was meant to be a message to the persecuted church. It was encouraging them to stand strong in their faith, knowing that they would face persecution from people who didn't believe what they believed, people who oftentimes might um, want to harm them, put them in jail, or even kill them for their beliefs. And so, like much of our scripture, this is a scripture that was written during a particular time and place. And so, in order to understand it, we have to understand that it was written for that particular time and speaking to that particular people, that persecuted church in the early days of the church. So, what does it say for us today? Well, I think, like all scripture, there is messages that we can carry on today. And I think God and the Holy Spirit continue to peak to speak through our scripture, to speak to us today. Um, there's a Rachel Held Evans quote that I love. I think I probably used it in here before. It's in her book, Inspired, um, where she talks about how do we understand the Bible that perhaps we don't read literally. Um, so obviously we read about dragons today. Um, I don't think the message of Revelation is literally about dragons. Um, she has this quote that says, Fairy tales are more than true, not because they t tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be defeated. And Revelations, to me, is this kind of story. It's a story where we learn not necessarily that dragons exist as they do in the book of Revelation, but they teach us that our dragons, whatever they may be, can be defeated. And this is the message that comes throughout the book of Revelation. We hear that God overcomes evil through Jesus. I want to read to you um, another, another passage from Revelation um, that you may have heard before because it's one that we often use um, at funerals, actually. It comes from Revelation 21. It says, starting in verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I think that message there is one um, that obviously we can continue to read today and understand that it has something to say for us today. Not only did it offer hope to the people of the early church who were being persecuted, but it offers hope to us that God is the beginning and the end. God was there before we ever existed, that God will be there long after we are. But it offers us hope that God continues to walk beside us and it offers us hope that there will be a time when there is no more tears, when there is no more death. Now what the book of Revelation doesn't tell us is who exactly the Antichrist is. It doesn't tell us when exactly the world will end or where exactly the world will end. Did you include a picture? No worries. So last week I um, did a presentation on my trip to the Holy Land, and one of the sites we went to is called Tel Megiddo. Um, and when you're you're up on top of this hill where all these different civilizations have come, and there's all these different ruins you can look at, but you look down and there's just this beautiful valley overlooking uh, the land in Israel. Um, 
And the word for Megiddo in Hebrew actually means Armageddon. Um, so you look up this valley, it's the Valley of Armageddon, um, which if you read kind of Revelation literally, some people have said that's where the end of the battle, the end of the world is going to happen. And you look out at this beautiful, peaceful valley and think, oh, I don't know if that's exactly true. <laughs> so I don't know, that, I think the book of Revelation doesn't actually tell us that unless we somehow try to read it literally. But what the book of Revelation does tell us is that we have the power of God, even in the most difficult of circumstances. And it tells us, again, that dragons can be defeated. So I want to share this story about defeating dragons in my own life. So last week, I decided that I was going to start running again. And I used to run some, uh, but I have not run regularly in probably a year or two. So I started running, um, and I think I ran maybe four times last week. Uh, but the thing about starting running, whether you're a runner or a non-runner, when you start a running program, it is pretty terrible. <laughs> um, yes. And last week, you know, it was 90-some degrees. Oh. That made it even worse. <laughs> um, and so I think there's a reason that a lot of people are not runners, probably because they've gone out, maybe tried running once, and decided this was terrible, and I'm not going to do it again. But there's something that happens if you stick with it. If you run four or five times a week and do that regularly, your body starts to adjust to it. Um, and then maybe one day you get out there and maybe it's not 90 degrees, maybe it's like 75, and it's just a beautiful day, and you finally realize that you can run for a long time and not feel like you're gonna die. And that is why I run. <laughs> but if you've never done running before, you don't know that that point is gonna happen. You don't know that that dragon can be defeated. But if you're someone like me, who in the past has been a runner a little bit, you know that it's possible to defeat that dragon. You just have to keep working at it. If you follow Christ, you will obviously encounter dragons, much like the early church encountered the dragons of persecution. If you're trying to follow Christ, if you're trying to be a light in the world, if you're trying to do good, help others, you will probably be persecuted at some point. But we also know that if we follow Christ, we have Christ on our side, that Jesus walks with us. We have a community of faith around us to help us conquer our dragons. And Revelation, this book, reminds us that those dragons can be defeated. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to share with you this morning um, about defeating dragons, but I can't share the whole story. I went to a movie this week, um, which was an awesome movie, um, very much about defeating the dragon. But I don't want to give away the whole movie because I want you to go see it. Um, the movie Peanut Butter Falcon, if you have not seen it, I highly recommend um, going to see it. It, is, it will make you feel like you can defeat the dragons in your life. So I invite you, if you get a chance, to go out and see that. Let us pray. God, I thank you that you walk with us through difficult times and through the easy times as well. Um, we thank you that you have given us this book of revelation that though it can be oftentimes confusing, it also reminds us that you are by our side helping us to defeat the dragons in our lives. We thank you that you continue to be there even when we struggle and don't know if we can make it. Lord, you are proof that the dragons can be defeated. And we thank you for the gift that you have given us in the resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have a new song um, that I wanted us to sing this morning because it's called Revelation Song. Um, and it, I think it's been on the radio some, so you may know it. Um, if you do, please sing out loud and join along. So please stand and join me as you're able.
few announcements this morning. Uh, first off, uh, we have some birthdays. Eddie Thornhill, who is not with us this morning, his birthday is today. Um, the Cachese family is not here this morning. They are having an early birthday celebration uh, with a sleepover, I think. Uh, Miriam uh, emailed me yesterday and said. Uh, but Angela has a birthday this Friday and Vinny on Saturday. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll be here next Sunday, so we will celebrate them in worship next Sunday. And also, Bud is here this morning, and he has a birthday this coming Saturday. So happy birthday, Bud. We'll celebrate you again next Sunday, too, why not? Um, if you weren't here with us in worship last Sunday, uh, we welcomed Ashley Pine and Brian Vargas into our Glendale family. So welcome, Ashley. Uh, Brian is a police officer who uh, works every other week, so he's not with us this, uh, this morning. Um, but his husband uh, just came back uh, from some visa issues from Mexico. Um, so we hope to meet Luis Vargas um, hopefully next Sunday when Brian's here. Um, I want to, uh, if you follow us on social media, a lot of the photos in our bulletin, uh, you'll see uh, our repeats of our social posts during the week. Uh, but I want to thank Steph yes. um, this week. Um, and um, it's not Pastor Appreciation Sunday. However, I missed that last year. Um, so uh, we're going to do it really big this October. Um, but um, <coughs> this week, uh, I think some people probably wonder, what does a pastor do during the week? Um, you, know, what, you know, they preach on Sundays and, and might visit. But I just want all of you to know how active uh, Steph is. Uh, we, let's see, just last week landscaped, we needed over at Open Table Nashville. Um, we went to the Belmont College Fair to meet freshmen at Belmont. Uh, we helped uh, Lynn, uh, one of our mutual friends, uh, 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 sorry, uh, his mom move uh, back to Nashville into her apartment. Um, she did a lot for our young adult gathering that we had on Wednesday, and the list goes on. And that is just the stuff that was captured in photos, um, let alone the visits and all that she does behind the scenes uh, in, in addition to preparing. <laughs> So I'm very excited about that, and we give thanks for you. Um, our new directories will be out next Sunday, so um, if I haven't hit you up for, uh, if you would like your photo and your information in the directory, it's not a members-only exclusive directory, it's whoever's active uh, in the life of Glendale kind of directory. Um, if you'd like to be in that so uh, you can contact each other, uh, please let me know if I don't have your information. Uh, I don't know if Steph touched on this, but Mountaintop is coming up. It's a way that we serve over in East Tennessee. Uh, it's a very impoverished uh, area. Um, and if you would like to go on that, it's in October. It's a Thursday evening through, uh, we come back Saturday night. Um, so we're here for church on Sunday. So if you would like to come with us, um, it's anything from siding to roofing to um, painting to floor ripping upping, a um, uh -huh. bunch of different things. Uh, you get to kind of pick what you do. So if you're scared of heights, don't, don't, scare that, don't let that scare you away. But we would love for you to come join us. Um, I am not a handy fix it kind of person and I ended up enjoying it. And uh, it is so it, it, it does a lot of good for uh, the people in that area. So if you'd like to come with us, we would love for you to come. Uh, uh, we have some giveaways today. Remember, you can buy your $10 Glendale mugs. Um, please uh, feel free to uh, see me if you would like to do that. Um, there's pictures in the back. That table behind Bud has pictures. So if you're here on Easter and took a picture in front of the cross and I haven't given it to you, it's there. Uh, also, if you have to bring this congregational photo or even if you weren't and you want one, uh, please pick one up and take it with you in their new upper rooms this morning. I'm trying to fly through this. Um, I did want to say something very exciting that's happening. Um, United Methodist Communications, who I work for, um, it's the communications and marketing agency of the Global United Methodist Church. Um, they uh, film every about two years, there's a new uh, commercial, a new um, kind of uh, campaign, I guess you could say, um, to uh, introduce or to raise awareness of the United Methodist Church and all that our global denomination does. I am so excited that it's 99.9% .9 sure that they will be filming that commercial here at Glendale. So we will be, this building will be featured in commercials on nationwide television um, and in photos and ads on websites and everywhere. So um, you might be seeing those uh, come uh, in a few months, which is so exciting. Um, and uh, Paul actually wanted me to invite anybody who wants to be in those commercials. Uh, we'll be seeking all age talent. Um, so um, you are welcome to be part of that experience. Uh, that'll be in mid-September on a, a Friday and Saturday. 
um, mid-September. So if you'd like to be part of that, it's very exciting, and it's so exciting to get uh, our building out into the world. Um, stuff already touched on the hallway lights, but I did want to say that that was part of a matching grant. Uh, anonymous $1,000 donation came in, um, and Facebook matched that during Giving Tuesday last year. So that means $2,000. Um, so that job was paid for um, by that. Um, so um, I will be hitting people up probably this next Giving Tuesday if they're gonna match donations again. And if you would like to give towards that matching donation, um, it's not guaranteed, but we can try. Um, and hopefully that'll double our money. So um, if you'd like, I'll, I'll have more information about that. And there's more events in the bulletin. Woo! Wow. <laughs> Do you have any other announcements for the good of the community? Hearing none. May you go forth from this place filled with the love of God so that you can go out and conquer the dragons in your own life and conquer the dragons that you face out in this world. Go in peace. <laughs> told me that you are now full-time in nursing at Belmont. So you know a couple of friends from possibly Chicago. Um, Shankle. Oh, Aaron Shankle? Yeah. Sarah. Yes. She's a dude. I like Sarah. Oh, I like her my greetings. I will. She'll know. I will. She is so much. We have had so much fun. Good. Um, yeah. It's a great group. And you know, once you get through the professionalism that they get out, they're just as crazy as me, and we can really have some fun. I think those, well, those two I'm the best. And, and you 
really deep, really fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for the
although it's still pretty out today. So. Well, the weather forecast said it was supposed to rain. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 